Ah, the 30s, the golden age of motoring. In the middle of the worst ever financial crisis, vehicle manufacturers in Europe and America produced some of their most stunning creations. In the United States, it was Cadillac, Pierce Arrow and Cord. In Europe, there were Mercedes, Alfa Romeo, Bugatti, Lagonda, Rolls-Royce. In France, the car that stood head and shoulders above the rest was Delage. Louis Delage formed his company in 1905 and, from the outset, quality of build and elegance of design were the company's guiding philosophy. The epitome of these goals, many feel, were the D8 models, first released in 1929. Powered by a 4-litre straight-eight engine, they also boasted a raft of innovations that gave them superior ride and handling. Now, imagine two of these magnificent vehicles packed into cardboard boxes. That's the way this car originally arrived at Melbourne's historic and vintage restorations. So in the early 50s, it was purchased and a restoration started. I mean, even in those days, people really valued these cars. The restoration started. And like a lot of these restorations, it got to a certain point, the car was then sold, it was in a million pieces, literally pulled down to the last nut and bolt. It went into a, a, a collection um, and sat for years and years and years, disassembled. It was sold at an auction. And when it was sold at the auction, the auctioneers to their, uh, I wouldn't know, we won't say credit, but they decided to break the car up into four lots and mix it with another D8 Delage. So the owner of the car went to the auction, knowing that this was the situation, he had to buy everything that came up. And then the, the, the car was brought out here and it sat for a while while he contemplated the, the enormity of the project. Uh, it was then sold to the current owner and he then commissioned us, first of all, to sort out all the D8S parts, which are the sports part from the standard car, which we did. Um, and uh, then started to put the car back together. There was never any doubt that the restoration project would be worth the effort. This Delage had been an important part of Australia's motoring history. Well, it's interesting, this car's got a really uh, a long history in Australia. It was, delivered, it was purchased new for, uh, off the Melbourne show, um, motor show in, in, the, in the middle 30s as a chassis. It was rebodied in Australia. Um, or bodied in Australia with a local body on it. The owner then took the car to Europe, had spent a lot of time pre the Second World War in Europe, came back to Australia and it was you know, used extensively and as, because the road conditions in Australia were pretty bad in those days, the body disintegrated. It's taken three years, a great deal of patience and dedication and a range of craftsmanship and skills that only HVR could pull together to turn the contents of those cardboard boxes into the truly magnificent machine that you see today. Well, I suppose there was the first six months was really a concept of sorting it out and then you know, getting down to design detail and, and really working out what we're actually going to do. And then there was about two years of full-time work on it. Well, the mechanical restoration was very straightforward. That's just getting into it and, and really doing all the remanufacturing. So there's probably 12 months' work in that. <clears throat> the body work, um, first of all, we needed to, to do the design and the style and um, do all the framework and actually frame it all up so that we knew what, what we were actually making. Then all the panels were made off off those patterns, I guess the word. So, again, there was about probably 12 months work uh, to do that in total. Because this particular body uh, is a copy of one that the factory made in the Delage factory which was really unusual and they made this body specifically for promoting the car and they used this car in trials and in general promotions to, to promote the D8 Delage sports car. While the body of the original car had been all but destroyed, the cardboard boxes from the auction did at least contain many original parts. The original parts that we've kept are all the jewellery. We were lucky that the car came with all of its jewellery. So the headlights, the radiator shell, the, all the fittings on the bonnet and even the little doors are the original 
doors off, off the bonnet. The rest of the bonnet we couldn't use because it was too badly damaged. So when you look through the car, uh, it's very much as if it had been delivered from the factory. Everything on the car and, and, and the design detail is exactly the same. And um, the gauges and all the rest of that are no. original, but they didn't look like that, did they, when you got them out of those No, boxes? no, well, they were in a million bits, and they'd been lying around, so you could imagine the condition. They were rusty, and uh, the faces were completely shot. So we uh, refaced them and rebuilt them, but essentially they are the original instruments that would have been in this car. And the dashboard, and the controls. Um, tail lights, all original. This particular D8 Delage is actually the S, or sports model, which boasted many innovations over the standard D8, such as different camshaft timing and valve gear, a bigger carburetor, an engine oil cooler, and servo-assisted brakes. They were designed for the rich and famous to drive from Paris to Nice flat out, and flat out meant well over 100 miles an hour. The dire financial circumstances in Europe in the 30s, following the Wall Street crash of 1929, meant that, in total, only 98 D8Ss were made, and there are two others in Australia, though they look nothing like this car. And despite the time and expense of bringing this D8S back to its former glory, it's no trophy car for its owner. What's the future for it? I mean, is it just going... It's, it's obviously been an enormously expensive project to get it to this stage of the game. What's the future for it? Oh, is it the, the just going to be a museum No, piece? definitely not. The owner's... Uh, he's already used the car. It's already been on one rally a, uh, and, dis and displayed. Um, it'll be used. He plans to use it. Um, we think that he may even take it to Europe for a, a sort of a continental tour, which would be a wonderful thing to do. <laughs> But yeah, he, uh, you know, despite the value of the car, he still, he still wants to use it. He, it's part of the enjoyment of owning it. The world of classic cars is a little richer with the restoration of this magnificent Delage. It brings back to life not only one of the great automotive names of the past, but a whole period that still brings joy to many. This is a prime example of an Art Deco car. Absolutely the, the, you know, the pinnacle of that period. Um, particularly when you look at the instruments and detail, other details of the car. This is, you know, this is a world-class restoration, a world-class car by any, any standards. So it'll be right up there. It'll be a showstopper. <laughs> but we're pretty proud to say that I, without, without hesitation. Um, I think if we parked that in the Champs-Élysées, we'd, we'd pull a crowd. <laughs>